Bank frauds on the rise and the Reserve Bank needs more teeth. The Governor of the Reserve Bank of India had a clear message for members of Parliament as he deposed before the Parliamentary Standing Committee today. The numbers he revealed were startling. There has been a 16% rise in bank frauds in FI18, taking the total number of cases closer to 6,000. That's not all. These frauds were worth a whopping 32,000 crore rupees and the rise in value is 35% compared to FI17. Now, sources say the RBI Governor Urjit Patel made it clear that the current laws do not provide adequate powers to the central bank to control public sector banks. Calling for amendments to Section 51 of the Banking Regulations Act, Patel said the Reserve Bank cannot only have supervisory powers over state-run banks. The Governor went on to list areas where he says the Reserve Bank has no powers over PSU banks on issues like the appointment or removal of a chairman, on the grant of licenses, on calling a meeting to directors, on the removal of bank managers and even superseding the board of a bank. The governor also expressed confidence before the MPs on tiding over the current bad loan crisis, saying that the number of stressed asset cases are reducing. Even a few months ago, Urjit Patel had said the central bank lacks powers to regulate PSU banks. He has reiterated that once again before the parliamentary panel. Joining us now to discuss this and more, we've got our special panel here with us, DK Mittal, the former banking secretary, banking sector expert, Ashwin Parikh. Gentlemen, appreciate you joining us here on the show. Ashwin Parikh, let me start by asking you, this is not the first time that Urjit Patel has made this plea, saying that the Reserve Bank should get more powers, that the Banking Regulation Act should be amended, that the RBI needs to have more control over public sector banks. But given the fact that we actually haven't seen much forward movement on this, do you specifically believe that we are going to see any changes I mean this would require legislative change do you expect any further movement well I mean to begin with one must admit that the change that let's say the Reserve Bank of India is asking for the governor is asking for can only come about if the government is willing to do so that's the first important observation mm. because it requires a substantial amount of changes in the act which means it has to be taken to the parliament and the parliament has to approve you know the amendment to the banking regulation act under which the more powers can be given so that's the first part so far you yeah. know after this this question came up i mean and this question has not come up for the first time even after dr pj Nayak committee uh, report we saw that there were i yes. think the then governor talked about some of the changes in the banking regulation act which were very essential mm. so i would say therefore that now the seriousness seems to be there and it might gather a certain amount of mm. momentum because the government has realized that unless the regulator is given the powers, you cannot expect the regulator to control mm. the banking system in, in expectation with whatever the system and the nation is expecting today, you know. Right. Uh, uh, Mr. D.K. Mittal, the former banking secretary, also with us. Uh, as uh, Mr. Parikh pointed out, uh, Mr. Mittal, this is not a new idea. This recommendation has been made in the past. Uh, do you realistically believe that we are on the cusp of seeing this change being pushed through? Uh, well, I know, uh, as a matter of principle, what RBI governor has said is perfectly fine. But we need to understand that the evolution of banking in India has a historical legacy. Banking has evolved in certain framework, and things mm. cannot be put behind uh, by one stroke of pen. You will understand that by doing right. that, there will be a lot many political issues uh, being raised by different parts of the you know the population, which has interest or vested interest in the whole governance. Mm. But the, I'd like to ask another question, that what stops RBI to use Section 35A of the Banking Regulation Act, which gives them every mm. power to do whatever they want? Mm. And I think that is enough. Okay. Secondly, all directors... Are you of saying the that this is a cop-out on the part... Let me ask you a straightforward question. You're saying that why doesn't the RBI exercise its powers under Section 35A? Do you believe that this is going back again? Uh, in some sense, uh, you know, the government wants to absolve itself of, of the NPA problem as well as the fraud problem, which, as we pointed out, the Reserve Bank governor telling the Parliamentary Standing Committee has seen a 17% rise in FI18 versus FI17. Is this also a little bit of blame game and shifting of responsibility, saying that, look, I can't control public sector banks and hence I'm not really responsible? responsible for what's happening within the banking system.
No, I don't think we should perceive it that way because this is a question which has been raised repeatedly and this is not the first time present governor has said. So we should take that, uh, you know, his comments in very right spirit. But my point is that, uh, you know, in bureaucracy we have learned how to live within the limitation. The objective is to deliver for mm. the country. So if that, while well, that is an ideal situation, that, that the laws are amended, bank regulation that is amended, and everything else is made applicable to public sector, uh, public sector banks as it applicable to private sector banks. But some of the questions mm. I like to say uh, for consideration that there is a section 35A which gives them full power to do whatever they want. So I think mm. there is an enabling provision available. What perhaps government need to tell them okay. that okay, fine, this has a political issue. And going through a process is not mm. so easy. Also, in, uh, particularly before elections, it is not so easy. Also. But if there is an issue, hmm. let's go ahead with it. The second point I have to say that is just so far as the appointment and removal of directors of the board is concerned, of any public sector bank, you know, hmm. you, we all need to be aware that they are done fully in consultation and in, with concurrence of the RBI. Hmm. Government does not appoint any director, including chairman or executive director, unless it is recommended by a committee headed by Governor RBI. So RBI is fully hmm. involved into the process. So, while right. point is well taken, by, by point of view from the governor, I agree what Governor Ajay is saying, that there has to be same framework for everybody. How, why should regulatory framework cannot be okay. different for public sector bank versus private sector? That point is 100% hmm. right. But the fact remains that right. we need to find ways within the limitation available to deliver for the country. Okay, let me also bring in uh, BP Sharma, the former executive director of Bank of India. Mr. Sharma, uh, you know, I want to now talk about the figure that the Reserve Bank of uh, India governor has shared with the Parliamentary Standing Committee. 32,000 crore rupees worth of frauds, uh, up 17% in comparison to FI17, a rise of 35% in terms of value. Uh, you know, uh, what do you believe is the need of the hour in terms of fine-tuning to ensure that we, in fact, I mean, Nobody is saying that frauds are going to go down to zero. I mean, that is the, that, that kind of risk the banking sector does need to take. But, you know, what we saw as far as the PNB scam was concerned, a virtual collapse at every level. What kind of fine-tuning is the need of the hour? See, what is needed is first we stop uh, reacting panically. This is a problem which has been accumulated over the years. It is not something that is crystallized overnight. There were issues internal to bank. There were issues internal to borrower. There were issues internal to government. And there were issues external to both mm. borrower and regular. Something has yes. come. It started with uh, the verdict of the Honorable Supreme Court. That itself made almost half a power project non viable or non implementable. Yeah. What is needed is right. all the stakeholders, the regulator, the government, and the bank, instead of fixing a target of three months or six months to resolve the problem, let's have a long term, you know, long term uh, strategy, mid term and short term. Sure. Everybody starts at discussing, okay. debating in the future. Nothing will happen to this NPA. Now that they have come with this, uh, no, I agree with you that, that there needs to be there needs to be a less reactive policy and a much more sustainable, yes. viable plan uh, that's put in place. But but and dealing with NPAs is different from fraud. And the number that I was quoting was the fraud number that the Reserve Bank of India governor has shared at 32,000 crores for FI18. But gentlemen, I also want to digress now and talk about another pressing issue, uh, and that has to do with PSP consolidation today. Uh, a private sector banker Uday Kotak has basically said that the time is not right for consolidation of the public sector space. Uh, let's listen into Uday Kotak and then I'll come back to you for your comments. At this point of time, one year before election, hmm. it's a wrong time to be thinking about consolidation of public sector banks uh, in any shape at this point of time. 
Uh, but when do you think, I mean, do you think there is a scope or there's reason enough for uh, so many banks to exist when a lot of them are doing the same work and are not in a good position? The government is also not able to capitalize all of them to the extent needed. Right time you have to think about these things, okay? So, uh, you know, you've been a big champion of the IBC, uh, but, uh, you know, are you as a banker really satisfied with what we've seen so far? I know you said the government has been quick to respond with changes, but some of those ch changes, especially the Section 29A, has been the cause for a lot of these delays. No, I think uh, you have to, some of the first successes are good. Mm. The process is One evolving. Day. Some of it is taking a little longer. In many cases, 270 days period is getting over. Yeah. So we have to watch the process. And I think this is a process of evolution. Mm. The most important point about IBC is it has decisively changed the balance in favor of the creditor in control versus the debtor in control. And I think that's a very powerful move. Well, that's Uday Kotak saying that this is not the right time to consider consolidation in the public sector banking space. Uh, uh, DK Mittal, let me ask you this. Uh, do you agree with what Mr. Kotak has said? Again, the speculation now picking up steam that the government is pressing forward with its plans to consolidate. Uh, it is a politically sensitive issue. Uh, is it even a realistic expectation as we move towards the general elections to expect any kind of consolidation? Even... <coughs> Let me say that uh, this issue needs to be understand, understood very properly. Consolidation per se is not something which the unions of the banks have proposed. And saying this having been there on their desk. They have mm. no fundamental reservation to consolidation, provided we make a framework, discuss with them, take them on board. Now, secondly, to, to say that what is going to be the right time for consolidation, uh, well, I can't predict. But seeing the, the, the public sector banks bleeding so badly, and because of that economy suffering, yeah. I think uh, any time is good time for the country. So it, mm. if this issue is not political, then what, what is the mean? problem? Yeah, well, the issue is political, uh, isn't it? Uh, uh, before I get Ashwin Parikh to comment as well, Mr. Mittal, I want to ask you about uh, the idea that seems to be back on the table, the possibility of an ARC uh, that is being discussed and was taken up uh, at the meeting that uh, the interim finance minister had with bankers over the weekend. Uh, you know, this, this idea keeps going back and forth, uh, is off the table, seems to be back on the table. What do you make of it? Shane, you're asking me on that? Yes. See, uh, this idea is uh, the idea in the, in the form it can be implemented is of Suti. And that is the right format. This is a format which has been tried globally. So India has tested mm. it once and they have recovered all the money invested in them at that, at that point of time. Yeah. And same thing needs to be done. This is to be done. There's no other way out. And ARC will suffer from mm. many other deficiencies, which a Suti kind of undertaking will not suffer. So the right thing okay. would be okay. have a Suti kind of undertaking, take sector by sector assets, consolidate them, and you know sell them out. Mm. The value of those assets okay. would be much All larger when they are together. Right. Ashwin Parikh, on both those issues, A, uh, react to their Kotex comments, consolidation may be inevitable, but this is not the right time, and B, uh, once again, this idea of an ARC uh, that seems to be back on the table. Well, let me just look at the first one first. Consolidation we've been talking about for a long time. I also agree with uh, Mr. Kotex to the extent that the timing is perhaps wrong. The benefits that can arise out of consolidation are certainly going to be there. They can happen, let's say, provided a lot of legal amendments in law are made. You know, the first question about the corporatization of public sector banking will come up. We'll have to move them out of the Nationalized Banking mm. Act. So there are a lot of issues which the government will have to seriously take up before they think about consolidation. On the bad banks, I mean, it's a bad idea, quite clearly. And uh, the same set of issues which are today confronting the banking system, A, capital, and B, the recovery yeah. bandwidth, you know, they will confront the bad bank as well. Mm. My submission instead would be that, let's say, we've embarked upon the NCLT process. It's a very good reform to my mind. Mm. It is evolving. It will take its proper shape. And eventually, the creditors will be empowered. Now, in that process, one of the missing mm. links, I suppose, you know, is the market for stressed assets. 
there is no market for stress test. The demand mm. part is missing. The supply mm. is in waterfalls. I mean, it's in the form of floodgates. You know, it's coming out from yeah. the banking system. Now, what do you do with that supply? I mean, without adequate demand and without yeah. generalizing that demand. So mm. we need more committees and more effort on the part of the government and the regulators okay. and the banking system itself to think about creating demand, mm. creating a market for those assets, creating more instruments perhaps, you know. Because, I mean, some of the mandates mm. that I'm getting on the buy side, for example, from overseas buyers, they're very clearly suggesting that, look, if your government is serious, if they really are stable, I mean, we are demonstrating a sense of sort of, I mean, non-seriousness yeah. by saying, look, can we also think of bad banks? We are embarked on NCLT, we will look yeah. at that. But in the yeah. meanwhile, we've come out with some bright yeah. solution. I suppose these things right. did, they, did the investors dread, you know, the overseas and the domestic investors don't yeah, like absolutely. this. Absolutely. They say, be consistent. Give yeah, people want clarity message. in terms of yeah, consistency NCLT, and clarity. Take, take the whole process of NCLT through. Mm. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I'll so end by asking you, submission. Mr. Sharma, I mean, on let's, exactly let's that issue. Let's complete the NCLT first. Uh, yeah. Then think about it. Sir. Fair point. Uh, fair point. Uh, do you agree with Ashwin Parikh that uh, bringing back the idea of a bad bank is a bad idea today? And that bank consolidation, uh, given the current climate, uh, both with respect to NPAs, the health of the banking sector, as well as the politicization of the issue, uh, is unlikely to move any further? I, I broadly agree with him. Say, I can uh, tell you one thing. There was only one merger. That was New Bank of India, which was merged in PNB. Uh, at that time, PNB was a very strong bank, and New Bank was at the literally at the point of liquidation. It was incurring huge loss. The uh, outcome of that merger was, on a positive side, the NBA employees, their jobs were protected. The depositors' deposit were protected. Mm. To that extent, it really helped. But today, we are okay. in a situation where everybody needs a strong bank. And we don't have any strong bank per se. So, absolutely, right. you know, our inability to address NP issue, we are toying with so many uh, ideas which is not addressing the issue of resolving right. NPS. So, I think uh, we should concentrate there and see that hmm. the reasons for such huge NPA are recorded and the mm. policy is retuned to our right. in, uh, such type of scenario in future. That should be the focus line. This has become NPM, this focus. loss is to be borne by the owner, one way or other. Fair point. So fo that. Focus on NPA and the cause behind uh, uh, NPAs yes. as opposed to consolidation at this point in time. DK Mittal, BP Sharma and Ashwin Parikh, appreciate you joining us uh, to discuss the key developments that have taken place in the banking space today with RBI Governor Urjit Patel deposing to the Parliamentary Standing Committee. With that, we'll take a break. There's a lot more coming up. Don't go anywhere.